Hi, today I will show you the routine for uh, taking care of my nepotes on my windowsill and even on the grill tent. You will see what I do every day, uh, morning and evening and uh, even once a week when I fertilize. So uh, on my windowsill, here is my windowsill. You already saw it a few times. Uh, that's uh, definitely my favorite room, but why I'll pour myself a coffee. What's good about this routine? The purpose is really to be able to check on the plants. I will uh, start to see if there is some pest because, ah, it happened. Uh, the trips attacked already. Uh, I, usually it's once or twice a year for me, uh, but they will be there. So if I have the first clue there is some drips, I really want to check and react the fastest possible. So taking care of the plants, the routine of watering is always something you want also to check if ever there is a weird stuff with your plants. And you'll see that some plants will always uh, enjoy more during summer, like now, and some other will prefer the winter. So it's always um, a good way to check your plant to see if everything's okay, which one is preferring uh, the warmer temperature or the cooler. Um, some will have too much light. You have to, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there is probably four pot, four big pot I can put here. So uh, sometimes you need to switch two pots to make sure uh, it's not getting too much light and uh, burning or being unhappy. So um, definitely on the window seal because sometimes the sun will reach the plants, you want to uh, monitor your plants. So uh, literally I spray every morning and evening. So it's uh, rainwater, you see the sphagnum moss, that's exactly what I will spray. I don't care about the plants in fact, I don't spray the leaves or whatever. If they are wet, no big deal. But that's the sphagnum that I'm watering. Uh, this way, when the sphagnum is uh, wet, I barely need to water my plants. Like I probably water them every two weeks. But because the sphagnum is always humid, there is uh, not a lot of evaporation inside the pot and uh, uh, some uh, wet sphagnum will drop on the substrate. Uh, so again, uh, make sure all the sphagnum is uh, loaded, water loaded. It will help to uh, bring uh, the humidity up and uh, it looks good. So uh, that's really what I do. And when I do that, I check uh, because I need to water the sphagnum even under the leaves. So I will uh, have a look of each part of the plants. Uh, the older leaves are getting pink. It's normal. I will uh, water everything and it will let me know if a pot is really dry because the sphagnum will die. Uh, here everything is okay. So I will continue spraying. And yeah, that's when you will see, uh, oh, this pitcher is about to open. This one is dying. Uh, this tendril is uh, doing, uh, like sometimes the tendril of an apentes will grow inside another pitcher. So uh, the plant will be stuck. Uh, this one was uh, not stuck, but it's probably a damage of the trips before. Uh, but it's recovering. It's almost perfect now. And you see the color of the leaves? the same plant here on the sun. So uh, you can tell this one is green, this one is uh, way redder because of the sun uh, reaching it during summer for a few hours. Uh, but it's no big deal. Uh, that's Nepontes pu amor uh, and it's picturing. So even if it's getting a lot of light, it's still good. And yes, the tendril are always trying to go where they should not. And you continue, you will see the old infected leaves that are better, but now it's the new one is great. You check if everything is picturing. You make sure the tendril again don't go like under a leaf and will grow deformed. So you, you better choose where they land because they will always go random. 
uh, for example, this one, it's okay. This one, I managed to have it uh, under a leaf and now it's great. Uh, what else? This big leaf jump, that's uh, um, truncata. Uh, by order, it's a cross, but uh, I can decide if it will land here or stay there. So I, uh, I will decide when the tent will be longer. Uh, what else? Yeah, some species uh, won't like the warm uh, summer. So even if the leaf is great, yeah, it's still, uh, yeah. And this one, yes, that's a big leaf jump from uh, Maxima Lumut. Not picturing, again, it could be the trip's damage, it could be uh, when I went uh, 20 days without watering the plants, it could be anything. But some other plants will keep producing pitcher, great leaves. Um, it's really a case by case. And yes, when a pitcher is dying, you want to notice that. When they are fully dead, you can remove them. This one, for example. If I open the lid of this dying pitcher, I will overfeed it because it's already starting to die and I want uh, the plant to get the more, the most uh, power from the nutrient. And some are almost dead, yet yeah, the bottom is still alive. You may cut them or not, it's really up to you. Uh, yeah, a lot of the plants actually started to uh, stop picturing because of the trip's damage or the cure. Could be anything. And it will depend on the species. This big tendril, that's my truncata, pure species. So it will get huge here. Uh, other huge picture, but yes, you see all the, the plants are producing uh, new leaves. Uh, this one, uh, that's uh, Ventricosa, it started to vine a few months ago and now it's about to be able to reach the bar, so I will uh, make it uh, crawl uh, up as the other vines. This one also vine. For now it's straight, but uh, again I will curve that to follow the other vines. And on the vines you want also to check uh, sometimes you have flowers, sometimes, uh, yeah, all the trip damage again. All pictures like that, same. Uh, you can remove them. It's almost fully done, this one, so I will cut it. Uh, but yes, that's the routine on the morning. And you always have some uh, surprise, like the this new activated node uh, would be great. Uh, you check the sphagnum again, a lot of sphagnum, light sphagnum. I will spray that in a unit and the dying pictures, uh, yeah, you just keep them as long as you can and uh, when you're sick of it, just cut them. And now that's uh, evening, so uh, it's almost the, the same as before. I will check uh, the plants, the, the flower because they are cool, uh, and the sphagnum. Depending where are the pots, some will stay pretty green and humid, so I will give a gentle mist. But some others uh, will start to, to dry, you see, they are light and a little bit dry. So you want to load that with water. Again, we are in summer, so uh, that's a lot of evaporation. Uh, some spots will always be quite uh, drying faster, I mean, so it's... Hard to tell the airflow, uh, the, the size of the pots, if the sun reach uh, or not. Uh, it's really pot per pot. Uh, but uh, yes, that's going to be mostly maintaining uh, a lot of water on the parts that uh, dried. And again, you want to make sure all the pictures have space to grow. And that's uh, often when I will check if there is some water on the tray or not. So uh, there is still a little bit of water. But if I want those to continue to pitcher, I will need to fill up the water tray again. And some spots, uh, when I was uh, out uh, for 20 days without spraying the sphagnum, part of the sphagnum died uh, and it will take some time to recover, but 
Oh, and uh, also sometimes you will have some uh, flowers. This one, for example, that's young, so I cannot really know for sure what is it. But at least I know there is a flower coming. So, we enter the tent now. This routine is not every morning and every evening. It's more one time per week, maybe two. It's really more to check for the watering. Let me explain. Here, uh, on the top, you see there is too much water. It's just uh, under the spraying system, which is okay, that's lowland there. But here, uh, there is no spraying that ever reach the pot. So it's very, very dry, not even moist. Maybe in the center, but not at the top. Here, it will be really moist. So the one that are naturally moist can handle uh, two weeks without watering, but those ones will require once a week at least watering. Same for all these. And I plan to add uh, four uh, sprayer, uh, but uh, I don't have the money right now. So it will wait and uh, I will just keep checking on the pots. And what else can I tell you? Yeah, the last fact done because it's so sprayed often, it will be very nice. I can even uh, put a lot of water on this tray and the sphagnum will just drink it. So the pot stays uh, quite uh, on the drier, uh, humid side. And uh, yeah, some leaves are starting to die. Uh, that's when you want to clean up. So it's really like that. You check for the watering and you spray and you make sure the leaves are not stuck. The tendril uh, don't uh, go where they should not. And this one is going behind, so I cannot move it easily. It will wait. But yeah, check for the watering and uh, check for any pest, obviously, but in the tent, that's rare. This one, I reduced the light already. I will do a video about it. And when uh, some pictures are uh, too old and start dying, that's also uh, what you want to clean up. Uh, especially when they are really tiny. Look at the leaves. That's fantastic. Reducing the light was a good call. Uh, nothing really for the Drosera. They sit into water, so there is no problem. Uh, check for the seedlings, obviously, because of the algae that can uh, overgrow easily uh, any kind of seedlings. You want to check that. And every cutting that you have, uh, they really need to stay uh, humid. The substrates, when they grow tiny roots, uh, you, the substrate have to stay uh, moist, uh, really humid, and then you can reduce the watering. But at the beginning, you don't want any uh, medium dry uh, substrate. And once a week, I will fertilize my Nepenthes. So I, I already put some um, orchid fertilizer, diluted, and it should be around 150 ppm. So it's 40. It's a little bit light, uh, but uh, that's it. You don't uh, overthink it. A little bit of fertilizer that you will spray, and I will show you how I do that. So because the water is full of nutrients, uh, you want to put that inside uh, the amphora. So any amphora uh, will have a good uh, soak. And then obviously the sphagnum moss, but this time you focus also mainly on uh, uh, spraying the leaves. Uh, fine mist is helping. A uh, big drop of water will tend to drop out of the leaves. Fine mist uh, is better, it stays on the, the leaves. And try your best to really spray uh, everywhere uh, the big leaves, but also the tiny one uh, that are under. So go everywhere, uh, be generous. 
because again, it's diluted, so the chance you arm your plants are uh, almost non-existent. If ever you have a flower, you don't want to miss uh, this flower. Uh, you may uh, cause uh, mold, etc. So uh, spray everything, leaves, pictures, but not the flowers. Oh, and uh, here is my uh, Spanish moss. Uh, I really love it. It's a pain to spray, so I need to put that directly on the plants and just spray it heavily. And if there is too much water with fertilizer, it will naturally fall on the Nepontes under. So uh, that's totally fine. But uh, that's what I do once a week. And you spray also, if you have some uh, fertilizer left, inside the pitchers. Don't fill them up uh, fully, but put a little bit on them. And on tiny pitchers, if you put some uh, betta fish pellet in it, that's gonna help to make sure this betta fish uh, dissolve, there is more liquid, it will help. And two freshly open uh, vichii, two different uh, plants, so I won't really feed them, but the old pitchers, they will be fed. And it takes some time, but again, it uh, forces you to have a look of each pitcher, uh, feed them uh, nicely, and the sprayer for that is perfect because you're able to aim really for uh, the center of the pitcher, and that's great. And when I still have uh, some fertilizer left, I will spray the sphagnum moss. Really like the routine, but this time it will have some food in it. Downstairs on the, uh, the trays with the lid, you want also to spray every kind of plant you have, except the really, really tiny seedlings, like the two first leaves. Uh, I don't spray them because uh, this fertilizer will also help the algae. So you want to be gentle. I want to have at least three, four leaves on the seedlings before really uh, giving it a boost. And that's my uh, sphagnum main culture. That's where I grow my sphagnum. Uh, as you see here, it was uh, great on the right, on the left. It's getting back, but I had to cut to harvest a lot of it. So here is what I will do. I will spray them with the fertilizer once a week. And now the tent. Usually I will have one sprayer bottle uh, full for the windowsill and another one for the grow tent. Because uh, now I have too, too many plants to be able to spray them with only one uh, bottle. But it's a tiny one too, so it's one gallon. So, uh, again, uh, just spray the fine mist everywhere and then you uh, complete with more uh, water on the pots that tend to dry uh, faster and then you feed the pitchers. And for really uh, low sphagnum uh, ratio on the pot, like this one, almost fully uh, perlite, uh, you want to be generous too, so. So the more drainage you have, the more spray I will give. And for bigger seedlings like that, I will uh, spray them. And they were reported uh, like this week. So there is absolutely no algae. Even the air plants uh, will be sprayed. Those ones, I will sell them, spray too. So everything. And that's fantastic on the tents because I don't care if there is water on the wall. Where if I do that on my windowsill, my wife won't be happy. I will soon buy another fertilizer that I plan to try and we will see if it's better than just the orchid fertilizer. Uh, but that's going to be for another video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to know more about the water tray method, here is a video for you. If you have any questions, please shoot in the comments and until next time, happy growing.